So I was into Final Fantasy fourteen at one point, and I recently quit because I just felt like it was getting a bit high maintenance. I was spending too much time in it, and I wanted to just finish the story and get it no worth. But I recently saw this headline on this YouTube video, and I thought I would uh, maybe watch it and uh, just give my thoughts on it. Uh, but if you wanted to see the original video without my commentary, I will put the link in the description box down below. So uh, let's get into that. Final Fantasy XIV has become one of the most acclaimed video games of recent times, with Final Fantasy XIV Inwalker being the second highest rated Final Fantasy game of all time only behind FF9. And with so many people hearing about how incredible this game's story is, many single player Final Fantasy fans have been tempted to play it. However, it is a really great game. Uh, I started playing it a long time ago, I think when it when it was in beta, and it was version 1.0, there were nightmares about this game. Like, people would just t tell you all these horror stories, and and then they'd, like, they just wish they'd never played it, myself included. And then, like, we waited a bit, and, you know, I had a, I had a clan, a free company, a guild, sort of, and they continued to play it for, like, a whole year. They were one of the groups that kept it alive, right? And I was kind of like on more on and off, but then eventually a year later when, uh, I thought it, was it a year later? I can't remember how long it was, but uh, eventually the game was relaunched and it became known as A Realm Reborn. And that's when I like really, really dived into it. And, you know, it was a lot better. Everything was uh, very much more enjoyable. Like, I just remember all these really clunky things that just really kept me away from the game. But, you know, once that happened, you know, I enjoyed the hell out of that game. And uh, some people would say that the first, uh, the base part of that game, there's, there's been four expansions, right? So, Heavensward, Stormblood, Shadowbringers, and then Endwalker. So, there's been four expansions, but the first part of Realm Reborn, people are saying that's rough. But I, I'm kind of, I had no problem with it. I actually went through that whole experience having a lot of fun. And then I also... Uh, I invent a lot of my own story as well when I'm playing a game, so I, I like to uh, go through it and kind of be imaginative, and you know I joke, I joke in a meta, meta kind of way as well, you know, and so I had a lot of fun just like being a character in that world, uh, even aside from the main story. And honestly, I I rarely ever spent a lot of time focusing on the main story. Uh, it wasn't until really, uh, uh, I would say Shadowbringers that I really started to appreciate the story for what it was. But uh, even at Heavensward, and then through uh, Stormblood, I did not fully like stick to the story the way that other people have. Other people really like those things. Now I laughed at a few things in Stormblood, but uh, people all often say Heavensward has the best story. But for me, it was just kind of uh, I just kind of breezed through it. I didn't really fully enjoy it. And then, uh, but when I got to Shadowbringers, that's when I that's when I fully appreciated uh, how everything came together. Like I didn't fully enjoy the story. But I did experience it. And then at Shadowbringers, that's when everything converged and made a lot more sense. Like your attachment to these characters you've known through all these expansions, like the emotions, that's that's when it came together. And then Endwalker was just a nice little, little nice little end on everything. Just put a little cherry on top of the cake. For one of the biggest barriers to entry for single player fans is the anxieties that they feel when having to play with others. Nakiyoshida has heard your pleas and plans to address this directly. On top of this, we're also getting a graphical update and a whole bunch of other content. And if you like. So that's the two things that are the subject of this video uh, this game becoming single player <laughs> to some degree, being able to play it on your own without needing to be a little bit social. And then secondarily, a graphical overhaul, which is kind of like surprising because I thought the graphics held it okay. Uh, but I guess uh, I'm, I'm actually not sure what they're going to do. Maybe add some more details. Maybe maybe the later expansions, they made the graphics look a little bit better. And I just didn't notice uh, things in the early uh, expansions where the graphics did not look as good. But uh, who knows? Starting with the first big announcement, Naoki Yoshida has confirmed that NFTs are not coming to Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV. He said that if... NFTs are like the weirdest. So many people hyped it up 
and a lot of these people were artists who were profiting off it. And then like other people were like joking about well, I'm not even sure whether they're joking, but they're legitimately I, I think it was legitimate. They were legitimately trying to get people into it. And I think it's because everyone wants to ride the next kind of Bitcoin kind of thing, right? Uh, if I got a, a Bitcoin the first time I heard about it in 2003, uh, let's say there was someone paying $3 per whole Bitcoin. And if that person kept those Bitcoins that he bought and he said he was buying a thousand of them. Oh my gosh. From $3 per Bitcoin. And what is it now? Maybe like forty to $50,000 per Bitcoin. You will never see returns like that ever. But as for, as for NFTs, I just never saw the point in them. And there are people who are trying to like swear up and down that these things are going to be great for them. But I think we've already seen some bit uh, some NFT crashes uh, here and there. And I, I even know one guy who had every intention of selling a whole lot of art for something like eighty thousand dollars, and then he like missed uh, some. He missed like a decimal point when he was setting it up or something, and he ended up like selling it off. I don't I can't remember. It could have been eight hundred bucks instead, but uh, yeah, it's a messy game, I think. Square Enix is going to make a game using NFTs, then it will be a game that is entirely designed around it. So please stop worrying that NFTs are going to be shoehorned into any of your existing games, or for the most part, any of your upcoming single player games. I'm gonna skip and ahead. Furthermore, there had been rumors on the Japanese side that perhaps now Kiyoshida could be quitting. Yoshida clarified that he is absolutely not leaving Square Enix or Final Fantasy XIV. He did set de uh, deadlines in the past and said he expected to leave in the past. But I think that I think this game probably gave back so the game and the reception it's received and the gamers they probably gave back so much love that. I'm sure he changed his mind at some point it, it, where it no longer becomes a burden because it was a huge burden to fix this game after the disaster of 1.0. And uh, I think that it may have just turned into something else. It's, it's almost like you put love in a bottle and then you can drink it every day. So I think that's what's going on here with him. I'm going to continue to skip through certain things here because I think that he's going to maybe over comment on it and I don't want this video to be too long. I mainly just want to look at the stuff related to the game becoming single player and then the graphical overhaul so any side tangents i'm probably going to skip over but if you want to see the full video i'm going to link it in the description box down below decade is on its way and with this naoki yoshida wants to advance final fantasy 14's experience as both a solo and a multiplayer rpg experience because of this they'll be enabling the trust system in all main scenario dungeons for those who aren't familiar the trust system allows you to take your canon npc ai party members into dungeons and allows you to play dungeon content like you would any single player final fantasy You'll also get bonus dialogue when you do use the trust system, as NPCs will make story relevant comments while you're in the dungeon. This is so. This is something that we've seen happening ever since uh, I think it was Shadowbringers, is that the story quests, the dungeons that you have to do for the story to progress the main story, uh, they implement a system called the trust system in which people where you would normally group up with them, like actual real life people around the world over the internet. You would group up with them and do these dungeons, but the trust system allowed you to do it with the characters from the main story in the game. And so we've been speculating for a long time whether or not this would apply to the older, older dungeons. And in particular, there is this story dungeon that's notorious. It's called uh, the Praetorium and then also the Castrum Meridanium. And uh, these two main story quests they take like an hour to complete, sometimes a little bit less, depending on the group you're with on uh, Castrum. Uh, but a lot of the reasons people continue to do this, and it was a pain because it was like watching the same cutscene for an hour. And that's what that dungeon pretty much was, was a long cutscene where the guy gave the same speech. <laughs> and, you know, me personally, I learned to love it. <laughs> Such 
devastation. This was not my intention. I learned to actually enjoy it and not feel bad during it. But every now and then you'll get someone just chatting because you're still doing it with other players, right? And they'll chat about how it's like a pain and there are some new players who are like just having to repeat it daily in order to get a reward because it did reward you for going through it. In fact, I'm wondering about the people who uh, still play the game and they rely on that reward in order to do the bare minimum in order to get a uh, kind of a daily kind of coinage, right? There's these things in the game called tomes. You got to do it. I don't want to get into that unless you're into the game. You probably already know. But anyways, changing that to a trust would mean no one would be obligated to that story, those two story dungeons ever again. And so that that's a kind of a big game changer here because on two fronts, once, one is that you don't get to do your daily allowance thing that you would do. But the other thing is that no one would be obligated to do the dungeon either. And it's, and, but at the same time, there were no other dungeons in that uh, duty, they call it. System is currently already in place in Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers and Inwalker. However, starting in patch 6.1, you'll be able to play through A Realm Reborn using the trust system, with Heaven's Ward and Stormblood receiving their trust system updates throughout 6.x. Yoshi P announced this reiterating the fact that Final Fantasy XIV's aim is to be a high quality RPG, and as a mainline Final Fantasy first and foremost, he wants more Final Fantasy fantasy fans to be able to experience this. This is going to be interesting because in this game, when you're playing these dungeons, sometimes there are things called unique mechanics. These are kind of surprise uh, mini games in the combat where you have to like dodge this, uh, learn the pattern of this. It's, it's pretty much like learning a mini video game within the game. And a lot of the times we learned it from each other, or we learned it with each other. It was a learning experience. But with the trust system, the computer players almost never get it wrong. So if you're playing these dungeons for the first time, you will learn it almost right away if you're playing with the trust system, because you can just follow their guide and they almost never fail. Almost never fail. <laughs> I've managed one time to have this dungeon where they died multiple times, and it's because there was some weird issue where uh, I was the tank and I was pulling the monster off his center and that actually messed up the the, the NPCs. Uh, they, they just didn't know where to stand properly after that. And so there are bugs in this thing. So uh, yeah, it's not exactly 100% uh, reliable, but for just a lot of regular players, it can be intimidating to do a brand new dungeon with new players because you'd when you're new, you don't want to be a burden on other people. And so uh, early on, when I came back to A Realm Reborn and I had to catch up to all these like insane things, uh, there are times when I didn't want to burden my guild, my free company, with uh, doing some of these super hard either dungeons or challenges, uh, primal battles, they call them, these duties. And uh, I just kind of like waited for a long time and I just continued to do as much as I could of the main story. Uh, and then eventually, you know, I had my friend in real life who was like, uh, I think you should get these done now. And so I, I'd run it with him and the rest of our, and our free company. And then we'd get it done. And it was kind of like, oh yeah, this, some of this is hard. This was easy. This was not so bad, you know? But uh, yeah, it's not easy for a newcomer who's not that social to uh, do things. Or if even if you are, like social, you don't want to be a burden on people, which is the case with me. I, I didn't want to like bug people because it always seems like uh, when you're dying, you frustrate the other people who basically pay a subscription to enjoy the game. And so I didn't want to waste anyone's time. And eventually I got over that and then I almost never cared. I, I didn't even, there was a time in between where I went from being that guy who had to rely on his free company to be a burden on those guys. And then eventually somewhere in the middle where I'm just like, I'd watch YouTube videos to learn the fight before I actually did it. And then at the very end, I just jumped in blindly every single time. And so uh, there was a kind of progression there uh, that even though, even though it was kind of a mystery uh, and sometimes you were surprised because you got it in the first run and it was, it was funny. It was exciting. And yeah, that's just the joy of video games, I guess.
but yeah, being a little bit scared sometimes uh, can really harm someone's ability to fully enjoy the game. So I, I'm okay with this trust system being inputted into the game. Although my only concern is that if it becomes too much of a crutch, people won't uh, people won't ever really play this game socially, which is it's really hard for the enjoyment of this game is being a part of this wonderful community. And he knows that many Final Fantasy fans simply just don't want to play online with others due to anxieties about performance. And for the most part now, if you just want to play this as a single player RPG, once these updates have rolled out, you will be able to do so. At least for about 90% of the main game story. What's the other 10% you may ask? Trials. For those who aren't familiar with Final Fantasy XIV, in the main story you'll have two different types of bosses you come across. Dungeon bosses and trials. The difference primarily is that a trial is an 8-man boss fight. These are tons of fun and some of the best content in Final Fantasy XIV, and in my opinion, absolutely should be played multiplayer. Trials are still very difficult to play. There are no trusts for trials yet. So yeah, you can still get that feeling when you're about to do a trial. It's like, oh man, we're gonna do this. Hope we don't lose. You know, sometimes I'll do a roulette, which is basically I queue up for a random trial or a dungeon and then I'll get into one and then, you know, I'm expecting to finish it and to get my daily reward, but if something goes wrong, maybe, and you'll die like one time and then you'll see like two or three people quit and it's like, I don't know what happened to them, but you know, I stick around and try to help those people beat that trial. You know, and then more people will eventually take their place. But sometimes people don't ever come back to take their place and you have to abandon the trial. And so, yeah, some things, some things happen like in that way. And I don't know why people quit because everyone knows that you have to kind of work at it. But if you have someone new, they're going to take a while to learn it. But there are some people who either uh, don't have faith in other people to learn it or they themselves are embarrassed that they died and they just left. And so I, I hope that's not the case a lot of the times, but you know, this community is actually really positive and I've rarely, rarely ever seen someone get angry at another person for losing things. I have seen it though. I've definitely seen it, but uh, it's very extremely rare. It's mostly positive. In fact, you can just brush it off every time you see anything negative or you can report it. There is a very low uh, tolerance level for uh, anti-community activity in this game. So if you've ever wondered about whether or not you should join this game, it's actually mostly positive. Uh, and you'll find that if you join any group, uh, they're mostly welcoming. Uh, you might have some different opinion. You could just find another group to join, another clan, another free company. These for the time being will not be receiving the trust system, however it will be considered after 7.0 launches. So it's not out of the question, and there's still probably a great chance it'll come at a later point. This will also include many adjustments especially throughout 2.0. The team is going to be making visual changes to areas that might have been rushed during the creation of 2.0. It's kind of no secret why they were rushing either. The first 8 player battle, Camp Westland, will be turned into a quest instance battle for a single player. The Praetorium and Cash Cape Westwind being turned into a single player completely. That should be one of the one <laughs> that Cape Westwind is a meme. Everybody jokes about how hard it is and how devastated you're gonna be and you get in there and he's basically a one shot guy. And it's your first kind of like I think it's your first I think pretty sure it's your first uh, eight man uh trial. So I'm kind of shocked that they would do that. Uh but uh, I don't know. I, I don't know how they're going to change it. They should do this thing where they should just try to scare you as part of the story to keep in tradition. Because that's, that's kind of like a tradition that the players came up with. And a lot of there's a lot of traditions in this game. Meridium will be turned into four player dungeons, and the Ultima Weapon battle will also now be a four player battle. A ton of awesome changes that are going to keep this game going for the next decade. Now, speaking of keeping this game going for the next decade, the graphics are definitely a huge point in that. Artistically speaking, Final Fantasy XIV is an absolutely beautiful game. I love the environment design, the character designs, and all of that stuff. However, it's impossible to 
deny that when the camera zooms up on things like hair textures, the game looks pretty rough. And finally, at long last, they have announced that they will be updating the graphics for the game. Yoshida started this. Wow. It's kind of weird by showing a very realistic depiction of the default male character and says that you know what that looks like i think they're taking cinematic textures and applying it to the in-game character so you have a little bump mapping there you have a little uh, raised little textures on the face you know some little speculars like the way the light grabs it it doesn't look like my character that you're looking at right now. That their aim is not photorealism, and that you should not, quote, expect Horizon Forbidden West. Instead, he showed this side-by-side -side comparison, which shows a tremendous graphical leap. Notice the shadows under his hair, as well as an actual skin material, and not just the flat texture. Speaking of which, the actual hair textures of the characters has been tremendously updated. I wonder if this is going to be an optional pack for people who uh, currently struggle to run this game. But of course, uh, well, even I ran this game and I was able to run it like 90 frames per second. Uh, I think with the upgrades, maybe it'll be a little bit harder. But uh, I guess that's a good reason to upgrade your computers or stop playing on older consoles if that's what you're doing. He also showed off what some other races will look like as well, and they'll be trying to preserve the art style as it is as much as humanly possible, so that after the graphical update, your character doesn't... You know what? I'm looking at this, um, Rogan, and he's lost something from left to right. The guy on the left looks way more manly. And the guy on the right looks a little, a little soft. They took away some of his face lines, some of the hard edges. They have to be very careful, I think. ...doesn't look funny or different than how they normally do. The goal is to make them a graphically enhanced version of what they already are. And it's not just the character models and textures being improved. The game will feature improved lighting and shadows, creating much more dynamic images. For example, look how greatly improved this image of Titania is. They'll also be improving the quality of environments. For... That is... That is kind of impressive. But uh, I think this benefit would really just work if you're actually just sitting down and looking at these things. I never really looked that closely at the grass. So, you know, when I think about the grass, I don't really imagine the grass on the left. I think of the grass on the right. And so that's my memory of it. But m memory is faulty in that way. <laughs> Sometimes when I think about Resident Evil 4, uh, I forget that it looks like really, really bad <laughs> when you go back to it now. Of course, uh, they recently put out a remaster. So if check that out they, there's like this remaster mod not the actual remaster but the people who worked on the mod to give it better textures it probably looks more true to your memory than the actual game for example look at these blades of grass they literally went from ugly and jaggy to grass that looks much more acceptable in a current generation title they also showed off improvements to other environments as well but please keep in mind that all the graphics that you're seeing right now are currently in testing phase and they're tweaking them to make them look as good as possible now ps4 users may be worried that these updates mean that they're no longer going to be able to play as well as people with potato pcs However, Yoshida has said that they are keeping graphical options in mind for lower-end hardware, and they don't think they'll have to drop PS4 support just yet for this update. The graphical update should be mostly rolled out by the launch of 7.0. Yoshida notes that the conversion of NPCs will be based on their story relevance, and graphical updates for gear will be based on its popularity. Well, if they're only going to update some non-player characters, it may be a bit inconsistent, I think. <laughs> Like, I don't want to be in a situation where uh, some of the characters are standing next to each other and one guy just looks way more detailed than the other. Uh, hopefully there is. Well, maybe the lighting will change enough that you won't have to worry about it. But uh, in terms of texture differences, I, I hope it works out better.
Fantasy. These are all incredible updates that ensure the future success of Final Fantasy XIV. And now that so much of the game is going to be soloable, it's going to bring in even more Final Fantasy fans. You guys know the spiel that I always do, but here it is. This is the greatest <laughs> Final Fantasy story that I have ever played through. In fact, that's an understatement. It's probably the best story in any video game that I've ever played. While A Realm Reborn can be a rough start, if you can get past it, then the game is absolutely worth it. And if your anxieties around having to play with other people have been stopping you from experiencing this game, then I hope that these updates will make it a lot easier for you to get through it. Although I still hope that if you are like that, that you will try playing with other people. Trust me, it's where the gameplay truly shines. Yeah, even if you are antisocial and you're worried about playing with other people, trust me when I say this, you'd barely have to speak to anyone if you, and then you can even end up joining a group of people and you could just eavesdrop on them and you can be in a guild and be completely silent. I've tried it both ways. I've been in free companies where I've been completely talkative, where I'm just like being the life of the party. And then I've joined other free companies where I've basically said nothing. And and there are times when I've just like hovered around and not said anything at all. And that, you know, you can pre people out, but you're still functional as a member of the group and you don't have to participate in any of their events. You don't have to join them in anything. You can just benefit from being tagged in that group. But you know, if you're antisocial, you don't have to worry about it. This game is very accommodating. You basically don't even, nobody even 100% expects you to have keyboard because you could be on the PS4 with just your controller. And so you just keep that in mind is that you don't have to communicate with people. You will probably enjoy this game. I personally quit this game because I just didn't have time. Yeah, I was, uh, I need to work on stuff and I just, there's just, there's just, there's no more time. There's not enough time to even consume all the content that I would like. Uh, and so, uh, but I encourage other people to play it. It was, it's a fun game. One of the best I ever played. Best in my memory, really. And the people are not nearly as scary as you think. However, I'm mostly just excited that a brand new group of people is finally going to get to experience one of the best Final Fantasy stories out there. But with all of that said and done, I want to hear from you. If you don't currently play Final Fantasy XIV, will you play after this trust system update? And for those who do play, are you excited about the graphical update? Subscribe, chill, and so yeah, so and let Ultima community. I'll link to this bit guy's channel under here. Okay, so yeah, that was basically a straightforward video. Made a lot of sense to me. And I I hope that uh, you guys got something out of it. If you played Final Fantasy or you haven't played Final Fantasy and you're looking into doing something that's a very inexpensive hobby. Uh, the funny thing is that you don't have to buy all four expansions. You can just buy the base game and then the last expansion. Basically, it's the complete edition plus the last expansion. If you just buy the base game, then you buy the latest expansion. It includes all the attaches. If you buy the complete edition and then the last expansion, it's the same thing as owning all get all. If you just want to play the trial, the trial is free. And I think it includes up to Heaven's Word, which is just hundreds of hours of content. There is a guy who's still playing on his trial and he doesn't have to upgrade and he can play indefinitely. Now, in some cases where the game is really popular, they have actually shut down the trial gameplay. So just keep that in mind is that in times when there's a new expansion or something exciting happening and the game is like, it's so uh, queued up that it actually takes, it actually takes you a while to log in. <laughs> like lately when, when all the players from World of Warcraft started jumping over Final Fantasy. The queues were 4,000 people long, and that's on a single server. And there, there is like over like, I can't remember how many, but like maybe 50 or 60 servers, 13 per data center, maybe like five data centers or something like that. I can't remember the exact numbers, but there were so many people playing that it actually took you hours to get into the game. But typically, it's only like a queue of like between 30 to 200 if you're on a popular server. Maybe no queue on some times of the day. And then it only takes like a couple of minutes. 
So that's very rare for it to have a really long queue, I think. Uh, but the game has just been getting more and more popular, and the devs have been trying to find out how to expand without with such a there's all these there's been a processor and chip shortage lately, so they actually can't get the hardware to make the to make the servers to expand the servers and make the game more accommodating to such a huge player base. But you know, people like me, we quit the game. We find a good place to quit the game. At the end of Endwalker, it kind of puts a nice little bow on top of everything and it's a good place for me to quit personally but uh, for other people the story continues it doesn't actually end completely it, it starts a new chapter a new story arc and so yeah it's been a long and fun journey and uh, I had a lot of fun in it and uh, even even this character's look is kind of based on my character in the game I don't know if I can show it anywhere but uh, yeah it's been a lot of fun and I hope that uh if anyone's out there who hasn't tried it and wants to try it, you should give it a shot. So yeah, like this video, uh, put the link in the description box for that guy's video if you just want to watch that on their own or share it. Uh, don't share my video <laughs> if, you, if you just want to share the information from that guy's video. And then uh, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. And then uh, I'll see you in the next video.